to get people to like you even though you're not funny and not interesting. Hi, my name is Jules T, trainer and coach for the Jules T channel. And I know you're here for a reason because you want to learn more on human behavior, which is the most complex topics to understand another person. So I'm here to share with you some experiences and best practice on how you want to deal with people. When I was young, I used to think to get people to like you, I must own a few of these important traits. To be young, to be beautiful, to be handsome and attractive. Or to own five Bs. A BMW, great body, a being a billionaire, own a bungalow and great brains. Fast forward 20 years later, puppy love is a thing of the past, marriage is a thing of the past, we're over it. Getting someone to like you is one of the greatest feeling in the world. It is not a nice to have, but a need to have it. So let me tell you why. Why it's important for you to be likable. In the office, it's crucial for people to like you because that's the one of the most important skills in order for you to stay longer in your job or propel yourself into the next step of your career. Because talent and technical skill sets will only get you so far but the ability to work well with others will give you that extra push factor to be able to succeed in your career. If you see someone who is very likeable, they look like superheroes. You really want to be one of them too. And I'm here to tell you, you can be that superhero. So here I am sharing with you three main tips how you can make yourself likable by many. So the first game that you need to play is the name game. Names are so important. If you look at the most popular kid in school, why is he or she popular? So they are not afraid to call out people's names in the hallways. They are so eager to know everyone in the room and people tend to like them too. So think of a time when someone call out your name. Your name is one of the most beautiful word in the whole wide world in your perspective. When someone calls out your name, it brings out that rush of emotion, that sense of importance that you are seeing. So when you communicate with people, it is important for you to call out the name of the person. So if it's your first time for you meeting this stranger, so it is important for you to call out their name at least three times for the first five minutes. It builds faster rapport with the other person. And to make sure that name sticks in your head, attach an image of the person to the name. That's why I say that in China, China Chinese people are really smart people. They tend to give a lot of interesting names and memorable names to themselves. In the past, my users, they had names such as Snoopy, Dragon, Phoenix, heaven whenever i talk to them that image itself automatically comes to me and it's so easy for me to remember their names and the second technique is to mirror that person mirroring technique is one of the most powerful techniques in nlp nlp means neuro linguistic programming so what happens is that you try to imitate certain actions of the other party what I call monkey see, monkey do. But it's not exactly mimicking that person 100%, but rather subtly follow certain actions of movement without the other party noticing it. So if that person crosses the legs, you do the same. If that person sits on the edge of the chair, you can slowly adjust yourself to the edge of the chair. And what we are trying to achieve is to create some similarities. Psychologically, mirroring technique makes you a more likable and persuasive person. So what we want to bring here is bringing similarity to the communication and how we are we going to trigger or make that happen. So one of the first important things to do that is to create small talk with someone that you just know. By creating small talk, you're creating a opportunity for yourself to repo and practice mirroring action.
actions. So what you're trying to do is find similarities in your passion and your liking. Hi Fa, you love Indian food too? Me too, I love this restaurant that's down the road. So when you try to find things that you have in common, the person feels more comfortable talking to you because you have something in common. And the last point is to be yourself and don't be judgmental. A very simple example, when my kids were younger, I used to bring them to parks. And when my kids meet other kids, within 15 seconds, Bang! They are best friends forever, BFF. While the parents on the other hand, they are totally a different story. I will be sitting on my bench and the other parent will be sitting at the far end of the other bench and we would be giving eye signals and hand signals. And we will have all kinds of thoughts in our heads. Hmm, why didn't she bring her husband to the park? Or why she's alone? So we are unconsciously judgmental and it's not a really healthy thing. If kids can bond with each other so easily, if we can bring ourselves to their level, that would make communication much more easier and much more fun. One of the most valuable advice that I received from my, one of my managers when I first joined in the company was Jules, is that you need to come down to the level of your staff. Don't put yourself so high up that people cannot reach you. So go down to the level and communicate with them. Make yourself available, reachable to them. And that will make a difference and people will come to you and you will find yourself more like a good person. So with these three techniques, so the first technique of playing the name game and number two, the mirroring action. And number three, be yourself. If you are able to incorporate these strategies in your communication, you will be surprised how others respond to you. I hope you enjoyed these strategies and do share with me how it impacted your communication in your workplace or in your daily life. I hope to see you in my next video. Thank you for all your support.